So we all seem to go through a transition in life. I'm going to grab my coffee here. When we're on this spiritual journey and we're trying to figure out this thing that's going to make us happy, you know, how can we do the things that we want to do in life? And we, we all seem to hit a crossroads in our life where we want to figure out how do we do that. And when we do that, we are going to be hit with some difficult life transitions. I was listening to another YouTuber who actually was asking the same questions and he had a really interesting story that I will link below so you can hear his, his story of how he went through his epiphany and, and, and how he transitioned. But the core of what he was saying really touched, uh, touched home for me. And for many of the people that I have worked with and that I know who have gone through this very similar transition, that people get to a point where they realize that what they're doing in life is just filled with a bunch of roles. Things that they've learned, things that they had to do to survive financially. A lot of choices were made that were that got them through where they're at right now. But at a certain point, you realize that you want to live a better life. And what is a better life? A better life would be you want to live with passion. You want to wake up every day excited about what you're doing. And there comes a time, I think, in everybody's life, or at least the people that I've, that I've spoken with and that are on this healing journey and this journey to evolve is that they hit this point where they realize they're not doing that thing that makes them feel happy. They feel like they are trapped in a job that they don't like, that they're going through the motions every day. And maybe that begins their journey of figuring out how to transition out of this lackluster life that they feel they're living and into one where they can live in their true passion. And it's not an easy journey. And there's a few things that I want to talk to you about that because in this journey, I often say this, if you're part of my Bliss Friday love letter, you've heard me say this a lot, that the, the, you know, the road to success and to, you, you know, you finding your passion and actually being able to live off it is filled with sadness and depression and tears and frustration but people just see the end result. You know, they look at someone and they say, oh, they're thriving. They're doing really good. And they think that, you know, that person was like that all the way up until they had their success. And this sets us up for an unrealistic expectation. So I'm always trying to work with people to give realistic expectations of what this journey looks like. And in this episode, I want to talk about living your passion and attracting your passion often means that you're giving something up. And I want to explain that. Some of the things that you have to give up are security. Some of the things that you give up are the ego that's attached to a title or the money, right? When you are going after something, you may have to give up the other things that you're spending money on that you've become accustomed to because these are things that you also like doing, but in order to build maybe a business or whatever that thing is that you're trying to go towards, that costs money too. What I learned in my own journey is I had to go through some valleys of thought. I think, you know, to get to the peak of being able to do what you want to do, you have to realize that you're going to hit some valleys and they're not going to be easy to get through because they're entangled with a life's worth of belief systems and thought processes um, in how you identified yourself, how you wrote a story around your identification as a successful person in life. And there's a bit of an unraveling that happens when you're trying to unravel all these other things in order for you to be the person that is attracting passion and living your passion. You know, there's this unraveling or this unlearning that has to take place. And this is the moment where you really realize that your identity is attached to a lot of these roles that you have in life, the ones, the very ones that you're trying to get rid of. 
And so there is this work where you have to unravel that and you have to look at yourself. And a lot of people are not willing to do that. So they just get frustrated and blame their lack of success on, you know, opportunities or, or other things when in reality, no opportunity is, is easy when you're, you're trying to achieve it. It's not going to be easy to reach where you want to go. But what I can tell you is the part that's probably the hardest is really looking at yourself and your own identity and realizing for me, for instance, um, I realized that I had a really hard decision to make because a lot of my identity of being a successful person was wrapped up in my title and my income. Because at the time I had worked really hard to get myself to where I needed to be to raise a family. I was a single mom. I told you so. My motivation was just, you know, I had to make money. And that meant I, I couldn't do the things that were artist related or uh, the other things that I was really interested in because I had to make that money. And that is a choice that I made to move up the ladder that I didn't, you know, to get to a place that I didn't want to be. But I, I understood that I needed to do that because I had children to raise and, and there was no fooling around. I needed to get that done. And I did that and I became successful. And when I moved and I transitioned in life and I moved to a different location, a different state where I could have an easier life because it wasn't so costly. And I could really think about what journey I wanted for myself, the mental capacity or the mental, uh, the mental part of this process started playing a role where it was constantly saying, but you could just go out and get another job and make a lot of money. And I also felt a pressure from maybe family that understood that point too, that, that why isn't she just going out and getting another job because she could make money when I wanted to actually live and build the life I wanted to lead now. And, and I will say that a lot of times this doesn't happen for a lot of people until they're much older. I was 50 before I was able to really start just thinking about myself by moving out of the place where we were just strapped all the time and moving somewhere else. We had this transition that for the first time in my life, I could actually think about what I wanted to do. And I could reacquaint myself with all the dreams I had and see whether or not those were still relevant to me. And I was going through the litany of all of those thought processes. And then what raised, you know, reared its, its head was, well, you could just go back out and, and, you know, you could make money and you can, you know, work a job that you don't want to do and you could make lots of money, but it's easier to live out here. And, and you could be putting all this money away instantly, right? That instant gratification to get that money, get that title, get that sense of feeling good about yourself. But the end result to that decision would have been that, yeah, I did all that, but now I'm back in the same place of not having passion, not being happy not wanting to do what I'm doing, you know, um, not waking, waking up every day, just hoping that you could get to Saturday and Sunday so that you could do what you wanted to do. And that was the very thing I was working against. But I realized during that time that a lot of my ego was wrapped in, was wrapped up in that, right. Wrapped up in the title and the money and, and knowing that other people knew that I had the title and the money. And so what I found was I had to give something up in order to attract that passion into my life to fully live my passion. What I had to give up was the ego that was attached to the title and everyone knowing I had that title being seen a certain way to other people. And I also had to give up the security because in order to get where I was going, I had to give up that paycheck. And that was a tough thing for me to reconcile because in the back of my mind, when things got hard, I was always saying, I could end all of this right now and just go get a job, right? And there were many times where I vocalized that to my husband when, when I came out here and I was reestablishing myself and, and reacquainting myself with all my dreams. I said, I could just go get a job and end this uncertainty. 
I could help you more, my husband, right? I could, I could, I could end this. I felt selfish for going after my dream. And I said, I could, I could end this, you know, not, not participating as much in helping you and not bringing home that bacon, that, you know, that big money. I could help you more if I just go out and get a job. And I had been at it for, you know, for quite a while. And he constantly came back and said, hell no, you know, you are not, you invested so much time and in, in thought in, into this. This is your time and you're not going to, to just go out and get the job. You're not going to do that. You know, you've worked really hard. Just keep at it. You know, you're so close. And so I did, and I had someone supportive, but that thought process is there. And that's the thing that you need to know. And so, you know, what really rang true to me is a lot of times when you're going after that dream, one of the things that's probably going to be consistent for all of you who are going after your dream, you're having a change of life and, and, and you're finally going after it is realize there is something that you give up. Now, in, in that being said, you know, in our situation, there was a long period of time where we couldn't give up anything because bills had to be paid and children needed to be taken care of. And that's why it took so long, you know, to get to where I'm at right now, because a lot of things had to be given up during that time to take care of those things. And we were not in a position. And that's that's the, the part that's going to be different for everybody is the position they're in, because you know, not everybody has somebody that can help support them to get there, you know, and for the longest time, we did not have that opportunity to do that. But when we moved, it became apparent that the opportunities had changed because we could live off of one income. And that allowed me time to be able to, to pursue all the things that I always wanted to do full force and kind of reestablish a different way of doing, doing it. And this is when all the online stuff, you know, I had to learn all that process and get that going. And that was new. Healing had always been there, but this was a new venture that, that I found that I could do. But I had to give up the security of that paycheck. I had to give up my ego. I had to reconcile with myself the guilt that I felt because I was so wrapped up in always bringing home a paycheck to to validate my worth. You know, there was a time that I felt I wasn't valuable to, you know, my family. I wasn't seen as a value because I wasn't making that money. You know, I have a side of the family that is very goal oriented and uh, very much into income and money. And um, I felt every time we got together and this, this could have been all me. Um, but I think there was some of that there too, which is, you know, the kind of the judgment because you will also, when you're trying to attract passion and you're giving certain things up, you're giving up the security of a, of a paycheck, you know, a stable paycheck while you're building something, you know, you may get judgment from family members that are more superficial or uh, more, uh, what's the word, materialistic, more into titles and, 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 and stuff, you might have that judgment and some of it is actual judgment. And a lot of it might be just the judgment you're putting on yourself that you think other people are perceiving you a certain way. So you go through all of this. And, and so it is true, you know, when I was listening to this other YouTuber talking about, you know, attracting passion and what he had to give up, you know, and my husband is going through a similar thing now where we're really focusing on his dream. You know, because I'm fully functional now, I want to make sure that he's in the same place where he can live out his dream. He can live his passion, the passion he gives himself, the things he wants to do to live with freedom, you know, the wake up every, to wake up every day and have the freedom to do all the things that you're passionate about. That's a lot of hard work. I got there and now it's his turn, right? So it's not an easy journey to attract the passion into your life because there are some very difficult psychological things that you have to go through, but you do have to give up your ego and you do have to give up some security. You do have to give up your sense of approval from other people in order to do that. And that's really difficult to do. And 
you have to give up the knowing of when it's all going to happen. Okay, but what you do have to do is believe. You have to wake up every day and you have to believe and you have to be excited about the journey that you're taking. And that does not mean that you are not going to be hit with days of doubt. No matter how successful any person is, they will continue to have doubts. And that's kind of the, the fertilizer, you know, for you to continue because then you prove it to yourself. You do more research, you figure it out so that you can get rid of the doubt because you've done all the, the work necessary to say, yeah, this is reasonable. This, I can do this. Okay. So with that being said, I just want to encourage all of you who are doing your dream to understand that this is not something that is easy and it's not meant to be, you know, and, and no matter what happens in your life, cause I've had dreams in my past that, you know, I wanted to be a singer for so long and it took me decades, you know, of just feeling like that dream was dead. And then it came back around as a bucket list and I was able to make a CD and there's a whole other story with that. I think that one is in my, um, wisdom sanctuary class where I tell my story about living with regret and, and how the blueprint to, to live without regret. Everything, the reason why I'm telling you that is because everything that ever, everything that you ever learn in life, when you follow your passion, when you go through all those steps that I just told you and you come out the other end, you realize that every single thing that you have ever gone through, every lesson you have learned, every experience that you have had, everything that you may have written that's collecting dust on a shelf, it all gets used when you finally get to that point where you have been willing to live with that insecurity, let go of your ego that's attached to the security and all the approval. When you get through all of that and you start really just full force going into all those things that you want to do to live with passion, every single thing that you have ever gone through gets used. And that's why I always say never waste a good crisis, right? We have a lot of crisis in our life going through all of these emotional things and it all gets used in a positive way. So whatever it is that you're going through right now in your own life, stick with it. Be rational, you know, look at the timing, mark out your plan, you know, and and then once you begin doing that because it makes sense for you to do it now, just keep going and have somebody in your life that is your trusted advisor that will be like my husband was to me to tell me the, those days where I felt like giving up and just going back to just getting that paycheck. Have somebody like that in your life that, that encourages you to stay strong in your dream and your pursuit of your dream, because you won't regret it when you get there and you'll see the bigger picture at the end of all of that. All right. Thank you so much. Make sure to like and subscribe and I'll see you guys next week. Bye. Don't forget to share this with other people too. bring more people over to Sufani's world. Help them find this inspirational information. Forward it to people that it could help put it on your social media too. Thank you so much. Bye.